Hi everyone, time for an update as we roll through winter 2021-22 and enter late spring and early summer. I'm going to talk about some extreme weather events of this past year. During the season and sub-seasonal events, we're also going to talk about how those were records and very anomalous or unusual. We'll also provide some trends and an outlook for summer 2022. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. Okay, a quick recap of the weather pattern over this past winter 2021-22. Northwest flow, we're talking about jet stream level where airplanes fly. Unusual blocking of this weather pattern or the westerlies that bring us precipitation during our normal winters in California. Kept the storm track just to our north and east for the majority of the winter between October and April, as shown here along the black line. This tends to be a dry weather pattern for California. Now, if we look at subseasonal or within the actual past winter season and water year, we can see there were two extremes. After January 1, the weather pattern was completely blocked and really no storms could enter most of California. Now, before that, in December, it was very wet where that blocking unusual pattern was shifted just to the west, allowed cold air to come down from the north and tropical moisture, atmospheric rivers from the south. Two different results. One brought near record rain and snow in December. The other one brought gorgeous sunsets, but dry conditions to most of California between January and April 1. Let's take a quick look back. December, how wet was it? It was very wet. Three atmospheric rivers affected central and southern California. Precipitation was much above normal. In fact, a lot of areas in the purple shading were two to four times above average from a series of storms. Now, let's take a look at the Sierra Nevada, a crucial area for water supply and snowpack. We started off the year very wet in October with an atmospheric river. Then we had December that was very wet as well, and we were on pace to be one of the wettest, if not the wettest year on record for precipitation. Then we flatlined from January through April 1, as shown here. Right now, we're sitting at 81% of average with a little burst of precipitation that occurred in April. Unfortunately, snowpack, though, is only about a third of what it should be for this time, May 1st. Let's take a quick look at the water year starting October 1st, all the way through May 1. You can see the left-hand side, most of California is in the red. So that is 40 to 70% of average. The storms that occurred are listed. Those are the ones for Southern California. On the right-hand side, departure from normal temperatures, not only were we dry most of the state, particularly along the coast and the mountains, we were warm and much above average temperatures. Here's a look at it on a different map across the entire West. You can see the water year was much drier than average for especially southeastern part of California, but all of California in the yellow shaded. And if you look at the percentile, comparing it to all years, you can see that it was much below average in those same areas of the Southern California deserts and northwestern part of California. Some particular numbers here for climate locations in Southern California. You can see all of them are several inches below average. We've seen some very dry conditions now two years in a row for the deserts as indicated at Palm Springs. But other locations from Orange County to Riverside County all the way down to Idlewild in the mountains of Riverside County, much drier than average conditions compared to what we should have by the end of April. And another look at the water year 
on a different color scale really shows how the Southern California desert stood out. But again, most of California in the brown shaded below average. If we look within the winter of 2021-22 again, particularly January through March, red shaded is areas 25% or less of average. Snowpack from January 1st at 160% went all the way down to what it's at now, 29% of average to date. So we had really dry conditions in January, February, and March, most of California. In fact, the record driest for January through March occurred in the deep red shaded areas. Even Southern California was second driest. Similar amounts of snow occurred on Mount Laguna in San Diego County, where precipitation was a little heavier than most areas in the state, as it did in Mammoth. The record dry shows up on this map as brown shaded everywhere. You can see the only exception in the weather pattern between January and March was San Diego County, which received more than the rest of the state compared to average. If we look at the weather pattern though, that changed after April 1st, it was a jet stream, this black line from west to east, cutting across central and northern California, not just for one day, but on average for the entire month of April. What did this produce? Well, we had significant precipitation, in some cases two times more than average in far northern California and the Sierra Nevada and the North Coast. Big snowfall late in the season occurred in the Lake Tahoe area as shown there, several feet of snow. If you look at Southern California, we were dry compared to even April averages and mild above average temperatures. So the weather pattern temporarily shifted for late season significant precipitation in Northern California. If we look at April 2022% of normal, the blue shaded is where it was wet and in some cases very wet, one to two times as wet compared to other Aprils that extended up into the Pacific Northwest. Unfortunately, the desert Southwest in Southern California, even for April averages, was below average considerably. Now, if you take a look at fire weather and fuel moisture, what we've been seeing over this winter is also those sub-seasonal effects. When we've had really wet conditions, the fuel moistures got up to around average. Unfortunately, during the dry episodes and the warm Santa Ana winds, including early April, the fuel moistures got down to near record low levels. So fuel moistures do appear to be stressed uh, given our current dry conditions overall this winter. The live fuel moistures or the grasses have been abundant thanks to the December rainfall and then the burst of rain in late March for Southern California. However, those are also drying out quickly here in late April and early May. In fact, here are some of the conditions of the grasses across San Diego County. You see they have cured and dry conditions now exist across much of the area, even for the live fuels. The drought monitor shows that we had improvements in December, but despite those improvements, conditions have actually gotten worse in parts of Central and Southern California. The main improvements are the green shaded areas in Arizona and in parts of the Southern Sierra Nevada where that improvement was thanks to the wet conditions we had in late October and of course, December. So drought prevails across the West, unfortunately, including all of California. If we look at the past five years, it's important to note that dry and warm conditions dominate Southern California. On the left-hand side is the percent of average precipitation in the past five years. You can see San Diego County is doing the best, but 
the LA Basin, Orange County, Riverside conditions have been much drier just north of San Diego. And then if you look at the desert areas, very poor conditions, not just past winter, but the past five years with the Salton Sea, Imperial Valley, extending up to the Mojave Desert. And that's also the area that's seen really warm, much above average conditions in terms of temperatures. Record-breaking annual temperatures in the Palm Springs area are showing up on this map here. Over the past five years, several degrees above average for temperature. Let's take a look at the water supply for California. We have seen improvements on some of the smaller reservoirs like Folsom Lake. The large reservoirs shown in red here, improvement has doubled compared to the all-time lows of last fall. Unfortunately though, reservoirs are still 50% full or less. If we take a look at the outlook for May, it's expected to be below average cool conditions and unsettled for much of the Rockies through the first part of May. Now for Southern California, that'll be below average temperatures and below average or normal precipitation, which normal precipitation is very little for May in Southern California. Some beneficial precipitation though for the Northern and Central Rockies. If we look out Further into May, it looks like expanding below average conditions for California and Nevada, and then above average temperatures building into central and southern California for a possible warm period and heat wave. If we look overall for the month of May, we expect the jet stream to be too far north to bring us cool conditions overall, or even wet conditions as shown here. This outlook is for the entire month of May combined. If we look at May through July, we see red dominates the map. Above average, much warmer than average temperature chances for the entire West, including most of California and Southern California. We do see the potential for above average monsoon and precipitation also in the late spring for the Arizona region as shown here. So that's good news uh, as that area has had a rapid start to the fire season. Now the outlook from June all the way through August is shown here. Warmer than average dominates the entire West including most of California except for the immediate coast. And we do see that indication of above average monsoon potential. So wetter than average condition for the desert Southwest. That is good news if it does materialize, but the bad news is the warmer than average conditions for all of the West as shown here. This outlook was issued April 21st, 2022.